Carrie, thank you for coming on the program. It's great talking to you again. It's good to uh, good to be with you. And a number of bills uh, in Nevada that are seeing action in the next couple of days. We've been talking about the campus protection uh, uh, legislation the last couple of times we've had you on, but there are a lot of other bills out there. Uh, you know, everything from uh, uh, AB 143, which uh, talks about. Uh, uh, being able to use, you know, any firearm to qualify for your right to carry permit. Uh, you've also got some other right to carry related measures. D- can you give us an update on where all of these bills stand right now, Carrie? Well, it, uh, yes, I, I can give you an update. Um, there have been a number of bills that have been working their way through the various houses. Um, currently, Senate Bill 126 uh, was heard uh, last week in Senate, um, excuse me, in the Assembly Judiciary Committee. And we're hoping that they will move that bill. What that does is it allows for a, uh, a permit holder to qualify with any semi-automatic that they're choosing to carry, similar to any revolver that they can carry. So this is a piece of legislation that we've been working on for a while. Uh, there's uh, Assembly Bill 143, which does the same thing as Senate Bill 126, but there is also um, concealed weapon carry permit confidentiality built into that currently um, for the last year. The Confidential. So it's really important that we get that bill moving forward, and and uh, that bill is waiting for a floor vote of the assembly. It passed out of the assembly a couple of weeks ago, and then there is uh, Assembly Bill 321, which is a version of Castle Doctrine. It's where you can um, you can use um, uh, deadly force uh, anywhere where you have a legal right to be. What it does not include, however, is the civil immunity aspect of it. It's seen as kind of a castle light bill, and that does have a hearing uh, tomorrow morning in the Assembly Judiciary Committee. But probably one of the biggest updates has been that um, Speaker Osagira here in the State Assembly has swept up a number of bills that have been working their way through the legislature and adopted them into a four-point um, omnibus bill. And so that bill is moving forward as well. That had its first hearing, I believe it was last week. So that's kind of where things are at this point. And, and they're very fluid. Um, you know, obviously, we don't want all of our eggs in one legislative basket. We would like a number of different bills out there because things happen during the course of the legislative process. And, and when they're in one bill, tricky things can happen. And, uh, you know, we've made it pretty clear that uh, the campus carry Senate Bill 231 is our priority and um, is it, these other issues are, are great, and, and we want them all to pass, and we want them all to have an opportunity to be heard. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a little more worried about the campus carry issue um, because it's a harder it's a, it's a harder vote. It's a, it's a tougher sell, and uh, these other issues have a great bipartisan support and have been um, receiving unanimous hearings every step of the way. Well, that that's good. Uh, and you say, uh, as far as uh, SB two thirty one, the campus carry bill, uh, you think that may come up for a vote in the Senate uh, in the next couple of weeks? Well, it has to. Yes, the twenty fifth, April twenty fifth, is the um, uh, is the deadline to get bills um, of the original origin out of their particular house. So, yes, I would imagine that uh, we have until the twenty fifth. But I'm guessing within the next week uh, that that bill is probably going to get brought up on the Senate floor. And uh, so we're just, I'll be honest with you, Cam, we're just kind of watching to make sure that there are no shenanigans with that bill. Um, There are, I believe, a number of assembly members that don't want to vote on it, so they would probably like to see the bill die in committee or get scuttled in some way. And, um, you know, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that that doesn't happen. All right. Well, Carrie, thanks again for coming on the program. It's always great uh, getting a chance to catch up with you. Same with you, Cam. Thank you. Carrie Herbertson, NRA ILA's Nevada State Liaison, joining us here on NRAnews.com.